can attract anything I want into my life. You know, mm -hmm. I am in charge of my life. I, you know, I can create health and happiness and, and, and being positive. I just remind myself of that over and over and over again. That who I am is not only what I have, but who I am is what I do, what I accomplish. And so we spend a big hunk of our lives believing that the way that we become, quote, successful, happy, fulfilled, self-actualized, whatever it might be, is on the basis of what I accomplish, what my resume looks like, um, how many promotions I get. And so we send our children off to school and we ask them to learn to identify themselves on how much they get and what they accomplish. Your grades become more important than what it is that you are studying. What you own, what clothes you wear, what labels you have, and so on. And we become obsessed with this kind of absurdity. And we, this is the false self at work. There are many ways to get the things that we want for ourselves in our lives. But basically, it all begins with how we choose to think. As you think, so shall you be. Seven little words that I think are perhaps the most important things that we can learn and master in our lives. This old proverb notion that I become what I think about all day long. And once you know that what you think about is what expands, you start getting real careful about what you think about. You don't allow your thoughts to be on anything that you don't want or that you wouldn't want to have manifest or show up for you in your life. In my mind, as I think about this idea of getting what you really want and being able to attract it into your life, what, what we have to look at is basically the obstacles that we have conditioned ourselves. And you notice I say that we have conditioned ourselves because I have never believed that we need to be putting the responsibility on someone else. If you're conditioned, it's because you have allowed yourself to become that. And if we are conditioned, if we've conditioned ourselves to believe certain kinds of things, and one of the things that we kind of believe and hang on to and, and live with is this whole idea that uh, all of the things that happened to me in my past are what are keeping me from doing what I'd like to do today. I can attract anything I want into my life. You know, mm -hmm. I am in charge of my life. I, you know, I can create health and happiness and, and, and being positive. I just remind myself of that over and over and over again until it just becomes a way of being. Because an affirmation is just sort of a, a beginning step. It's a way of uh, allowing yourself to, uh, to retrain your mind, mm -hmm. so to create the habit. The habit that we have that things aren't going to work out and things are terrible and, yeah. and, and I can't That's like old programming, overcome. correct? Yes, it's, all, yeah. it's just habitual thinking. Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, uh, one of the great uh, poets, Wordsworth, said that uh, habits rule the unreflecting herd. You know, it's like you become part of the herd that doesn't reflect, and you want to change those habits. The most important, the most important thing about being inspired is to understand the, what the word inspired means. It's, if you break it down, it's uh, in spirit, um, and it's it's like a recognition. I think the most significant thing about it is that you you begin to realize that uh, that who I am is not a human being here having a spiritual experience. But it's really the reverse, that who I am is a spiritual being, an infinite spiritual invisible being, having a temporary human experience. And the key to living an inspired life is to always come from that place. Uh, in Excuses Be Gone, in a recent book of mine, I talk about uh, living from a place of awareness. And awareness is thinking, thinking like God thinks. Like we, we all come from a source, every single one of us. And we all return to that source. Mm -hmm. You know, T.S. Eliot said, we shall not cease from exploration. But at the end of all of our exploring will be to return to the place from which we originated and to know it for the first time. And he was speaking about death. You know, it's like ultimately you're going to return to the place from which you originated. I take that to mean that if you return to the place from which you originated, you don't have to die to, uh, to yeah. experience that. Yeah. You can yeah. live in spirit. And when you see yourself as a spiritual being, having a temporary human experience. Who and everything you, is, is yeah, ongoing. Everything shifts, everything, nothing, everything changes for yeah. you. And you. You begin to recognize that there's, there's absolutely nothing that you can't do. You know, that, that, that all things are possible literally means all things are possible. So whatever, whatever it is you'd like to attract into your life, whatever you'd like to accomplish, whatever you'd like to do in your life, 
If you start from a spiritual place, a place of all things are possible, if I return you know, and get to that place, mm -hmm. and then I begin to visualize it, and I begin to use my imagination, because everything that we see around us, everything in this world, was once imagined. Everything, Every, you know, that camera that is there, the, the clothes that you're wearing, the chairs mm -hmm. that we're sitting on, everything mm -hmm. once had to be imagined. If you get that, I mean, Einstein's famous observation was that, you know, imagination is more important than knowledge. If you can learn how important your imagination is, and that's where your spirit is, in that place, mm -hmm. and then once you go to that place, in, in, in what it is you'd like to attract into your life, you're coming from a spiritual place, absolutely nothing is impossible. Yeah. That, that particles, quantum physics teaches us that particles do not come from particles. That it's the, you know, Jesus said it, it's the spirit that gives life. Find your spirit. It's that quantum leap. Yeah, and then ambition becomes the part of our life when we take on all of these things. I am what I have, and I have to accomplish <laughs> more. And, yeah. and then two is, a, is when you begin to see, if, if you start here, and you, you start heading this way, away from your original source, away from your source, then you have to someday make a U-turn, which I've had to do. And as you make a U-turn, you start coming home. You start, but you don't have to die. You come back to your spirit. And then meaning is when you're living here. And I think that if every, everything that's in that invisible drop of, of human protoplasm, that tiny little speck of human protoplasm that began you, you know, where you can see a, a trillion of them on the head of a pin, mm -hmm. but everything you needed for, right. for this journey that right. you have, the right. color of your eyes, the aging process, all the things that are happening to us, um, if everything that we needed for the physical journey is in that speck, then so was everything that we needed for the rest of the journey as well. Relax, let go, lighten up, uh, <laughs> practice non-interference, see God in nature, find your, find your true self in the, in, in the joy of, uh, of, of the miraculousness. I mean, Ruby said, sell, sell your cleverness. No matter what anybody says to you here, no matter what kind of uh, uh, anger comes directed towards you, no matter how much hate you may encounter showing up in your life, there are no justified resentments, meaning that if you carry around resentment inside of you about anything or about anyone, and I'm talking about the person that you lent money to and hasn't paid you back, I'm talking about the person in your life that you feel was abusive in your life, I'm talking about the person who walked out on you and left you for somebody else. I'm talking about all of the things that you have justified in your heart and in your life that you have the right to be resentful about. And I'm suggesting to you that those resentments will always end up harming you and creating in you a sense of despair.